we're going to talk Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets because I felt like that last segment and the segment beforehand were segments where I talked a lot. I'm just going to give you the floor to start on the Brooklyn Nets. Tell me about what you have liked, what you've seen from this team. So the Brooklyn Nets are nine and one in their last 10. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff going on here. Um, I think the biggest thing is just the defense. The defense has been really good from them. Uh, they've completely ramped up their intensity. Like, I mean, obviously earlier in the year when they had all the off court stuff going on, they were not playing all that bought in. They didn't look, they didn't look like super engaged for the most part. Um, it's been different now. Uh, they're, it's kind of it, obviously not the same thing, somewhat different principles, but they're doing a lot of what Boston did last year, just uh, switching everything pretty aggressively, but they've done a really good job of scrambling their smalls out. Um, Nick Claxton, I think has been fantastic all year and he's been huge here. Like his rim protection really has just taken such a massive step this year uh, in terms of actually being able to be a primary rim protector. The, the weak side stuff has always been there, but I think he's really started to hone that in and become a very, very good player while also having the, the awesome switch capabilities. Like his growth over the years has just been really fun to watch. I think he's added a little bit more off the bounce, some more fluidity as a driver, a little bit to uh, – he's still working out, you know, um, short roll stuff. I think that started to come a little bit last year. But point being, like he's 23 years old. I'm really loving what he's bringing. Um can I can I stop you there? Because yeah. I think that that's almost the most like intriguing part of this for the Nets, right? Yeah. So defensively, when Steve Nash was the coach, you know, up until November 1st, they were giving up 120.4 points per 100 possessions. The thing is, though, that like it was basically just teams shooting the hell out of it from three. Like that, that was the th like the whole problem. I actually think Claxton has been pretty good. I think Kevin Durant's been really good as a weak side rim protector. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Ben has been pretty good, you know, rotating over from the weak side when he has to defensively, even though his job is more, you know, kind of point of attack wing related. The sneaky thing is that like their opponent shot quality, according to, you know, play by play stats was basically like 0.53, which is actually the same that it is now under Jacques Vaughn, like the shot quality was basically the same because they were so good protecting the rim, which in large part is a credit to Nick Claxton and Kevin Durant and Ben Simmons. The problem for them early in the season was just like spraying kickouts all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was just way too easy for teams to get wide open threes. And, and that was the biggest part of the problem, right? Um, they've really cleaned that up. I think that's what they've cleaned up more than anything. Yeah. They've been better and smarter rotationally. I think that they've just been more locked in to what they have to do to win basketball games. Uh, and I think that's the part that stood out most for me. It's just like being more cognizant rotationally, closing out hard on shooters, shutting off the tap of the three-point line just a little bit more than they did early in the season. Definitely. And like you mentioned too, I think Ben, he still isn't, you know, back to his old self, but I think he's looked a lot better um, over the last couple of weeks in terms of just getting his mobility. I think aggression on offense and on defense too has been better. It's again, still not perfect, but I think in terms of what we were seeing early on in the year, um, I've been happy with what, what I've seen from him just based on what he's coming back from. Um and then, like, again, overall, like, I think that j just top to bottom, I think the defense has been really good. I've loved what their role players are bringing. Like, Yuta Watanabe has been really good for them. When the shot is falling for him from outside, like, he's just a good plug-and-play rotation player. The second the shot disappears, yep. we're having a different different story. But, like, he's played a huge part in this run recently. Like, even just look at, th the, at the Toronto game. Um, he was so active defensively. The, the corner three late, that ended up putting them up. Um, Edmund Sumner has played really well for them, just as a secondary ball handler, really aggressive defender. Uh, TJ Warren is back, and that is probably what I'm most excited about for this team, just in what it brings lineup versatility wise. Like, yeah. you, I, I think, like, I'm about to get to something that is bad, but real quick, Mark, yeah, you saying the thing I'm most excited about with the Brooklyn Nets right now is TJ Warren, of course, is it's very on brand, the most on brand Mark Schindler take I've ever seen in my life. Well, it's, uh, uh, yes, exactly. But also, like, I, he's not fully back to who I think he can be defensively. Um, 
but it's just think like especially with how they're playing right now like they'll ice ball screens on the side and they switch a lot so having a guy who's six foot eight that can move his feet decently use his wingspan and stay in front of somebody that's monstrous to what they have already um so i've loved that but it's more so offensively like okay well you're kicking the ball out to one of the best finishers in the league in the last five years off the bounce like he's so good attacking gaps like obviously i think the three needs to get there for him i actually want him to hunt his three a little bit more which is i mean that's always been a thing with tj except for the one year in indiana um but he's just been really aggressive you know cutting into the paint taking one or two steps and hitting a really good floater or a quick one two pull up like those are things that he's just efficient enough on that it it counts. And he's really good cutting baseline, like everything. One of the things I've loved too, uh, they're like with him, any of their guys who have been suspect as shooters, they're using them the second that they come off of an action uh, and they don't have an open shot. They're just running a quick reversal in, in an empty corner. So like he'll run a DHO for whatever shooter station, but they've been really good with their shooting alignment. Um, when you consider how limited the roster is spacing wise, they've done a really good job of having, okay, well, Ben or Royce will bring up the ball and initiate sets and have Kevin or, or Kyrie coming off the ball first off of a screen. So that way, like, okay, if you have a guy who can get downhill and make decisions, even if they're not the best at scoring in the paint, you force them to get guarded because you don't want any rotations happening towards the middle of the floor. So it's just, they've been doing smart little things to make the offense flow better. I don't really think that this is like this is a top 10 offense because of Kyrie, Kyrie and, and Katie's shot making and some of the ancillary guys. But I do have like obviously bigger playoff questions when you can sag off of like somebody like Ben or or even Royce, because I'd be very willing to just say, OK, fuck you, make shots like that's what the what the Suns did to Jay Crowder last year. I think you very much do the same thing to Royce with what his finishing has been. Um, but again, point being, that's not to diminish everything. It's more like. This is good process stuff. I really have liked what they're starting to do. Um, and it feels replicable. And more so, like, like Kyrie's been really good. The contested shot making is awesome. He's always been a fantastic off-movement off shooter and, and just off-screen player. But then KD's just been unreal. And that's what we're here to talk about. Like, his yeah. last month of basketball, I would – so, me, over the last 10 games, I think KD's been the best player in basketball. Um like you mentioned, not a bad I, thing. Like yeah. I, I would, he's been right there with Anthony Davis. Yeah, like, like it's, it's I, like you can you can split hairs for sure, but it's like um, he's doing much of the same of what he did last year before that run uh, to the playoffs. You know when he came off of injury, and his passing was like the best that we've ever seen it. Mainly because they yeah. needed it to be. It's still the accuracy can be all over the place from time to time, but like the vision has been really good. Um, and he's getting two to two, three to the ball routinely. I think that you can look at him and be like, well, there has been some issues with term- turnovers. And I'll be like, okay, well, he's getting nail help every time he drives. There's nobody worried about slot shooters. Like the spacing, again, yeah. they are scoring in spite, not because of what the offense is doing. Um, again, the contested shot making has been unreal. The driving ability has been really good. What he's done opening up others has been fantastic. The defense has been really good. I think his defense has been really damn good all year, even yeah, when, I agree. even when, I actually uh, agree. yeah, even like I never have felt that that KD was just shipping out a performance. I can't say the same about Kyrie, but um, KD has been there the entire year. Like he's been working his ass off. I actually, I don't know if he would make it an all defense team for me right now, but he would be on the nomination list um, in terms of cutting it down. Um, yeah, like if I get to like 30 names to like cut down to 10 eventually, like that would be it. You know, like yeah. he would be on it like unequivocally. And then yeah. like we'd – I'd figure it out and parse from there. But like 100%, he's been awesome defensively. Like there's just no no other way about it. Yeah, yeah. He's just been – he's been impressed with the watch, man. And again, like I mentioned, the con- the contested stuff has been unreal. So much of his work is coming from inside the paint. Like I think he's only shooting four threes a game over his last 10 um i'm looking up the number right now but like he's just been on another planet right now like and when you're talking about the the diet of shots that he's hitting and doing so so well hitting it that it's just like you can't really do anything about it like his i mean we know it's the stuff that we know about like his release points insane um he's so good at attacking advantages when as soon as they appear like and he's really good off the ball too i feel like that almost goes underrated because of 
um, how fantastic of an isolation scorer he is, but his ability to move without the ball and just yeah. find easy buckets without really needing to even get touches is, is always well, really it, impressive to me. It's more than for himself. Yeah. He is really, really good at drawing defenders toward himself to open up like cutting lanes for Ben Simmons or to open up like, you know, a defender has to come to him, you know, if he flashes into the middle and Joe Harris gets open on the opposite wing. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like Joe Harris gets open to cut to the rim because KD is moving without the ball and you have to pay so much attention to Kevin Durant. I think it's worth just like noticing how unbelievable Kevin Durant shooting splits are right now. So like KD as a whole is shooting 56% from the field. He has taken only he's taken under three shots at the rim per game. <laughs> like yeah. that's bonkers. He's shooting 56% from the field, taking under three shots at the rim per game. If you look at his shooting splits right now, Kevin Durant from three to ten feet is shooting 59%. From 10 to 16 feet, do you know what Kevin Durant is shooting this year, Mark? Like a million percent. <laughs> 62 percent it's pretty good he's basically shooting like you know a normal wing percentage at the rim from 10 to 16 feet away from the rim it's yeah. absolutely bonkers i mean yeah oh, in, in december oh sorry go ahead yeah no by the way he's shooting 50.5 percent from 16 to 23 feet in the mid-range yeah like, it's it's unreal i mean like yeah in december so it's it's only six games but still it's five five and one in december 28 points per game on almost 69% true shooting, which is very nice. Uh, but then also, like, doing all the stuff we talked about as a playmaker. Like, he, the efficiency is just kind of unreal. Like, I just don't know how how you're supposed to guard it. It's – and, like, like I mean, the, See, I, like, I that, almost that's feel like – You said earlier, like, you don't think that, like, this translates to the playoffs. I'm almost well, just I, like, I don't know how you stop this. We'll see, because what's <laughs> difficult is I just – obviously, he did not have a good series – against the Celtics to be fair but what's difficult for me is I feel like you get the same thing like I think that the whole thing for me is because like I mentioned and this is not to nitpick at Kevin at all Kevin is unreal like I I like I just said I think he's been the best player in basketball for the last couple of weeks like I think the biggest thing is you don't double team him but you have uh kind of like what the Celtics not right now but what they used to do under Brad Stevens to post players like they used to always neutralize the modest bonus by not sending help. They would have yeah. help in gaps, but they wouldn't actually send to it's what the Celtics did to KD last year in the playoffs. And granted, I think he makes more shots this time around, but he really struggled with that. And again, that's more so because of who else was on the court, but it's not that different from last year. Like I, again, like I think if TJ Warren is healthy, but I also just, you can't bake in TJ Warren being healthy. Like I would like to, I think that's a conversation we can have if this is the same in four months, but um, I just, I still have real questions about this team at the, at the highest level, but, um, th but that's well noting too, like, okay, you're dedicating three guys at all times to guarding Kevin Durant a certain way. That's how good he's playing right now. That's like the only way you can, you're, you're, you're not even stopping him. You're just hoping to stop him or hoping to make it difficult. And that speaks to how incredible he's been. So the Brooklyn Nets got swept last year in four games by the Boston Celtics, right? Like, that happened. Yeah. Do you know what the Brooklyn Nets' offensive rating was in those four games? Not good. I know it was bad. No, it was elite. It was oh, 115. Really? Yeah. Wow. forgot about that. They were actually fine offensively in that series. Like, that's the thing that, like, it, it was the defense that was an abomination. Like, they couldn't defend anyone. Everyone talks about how well they did on Kevin Durant and they did. And Kevin had probably his like worst few games in the playoffs, right? Like Kevin Durant shot 38% in those playoff games and averaged 26 points per game. Uh, that was the lowest since his rookie season or no, maybe his second season when they made the playoffs uh, in Oklahoma city. And, you know, certainly the worst he shot since that season in the playoffs. He also just had offense, 26 points in a quarter against the, the, the Pistons right now. I just saw that. Yeah, he has, he has 41 on like 22 shots. He's incredible. Yeah. But like while Kevin Durant, it worked like it worked on Kevin Durant, I don't think you can say that the Celtics defended well in that series. 
And the whole idea with what Brooklyn is trying to do now is make a more cogent defensive structure that makes sense, right? Having Ben Simmons play, going out and acquiring Royce O'Neal, having Yuta Watanabe as like a good, flexible bench defensive option to bring off the court. Um, Nick Claxton being more capable as an anchor that you can play real minutes in a playoff series, hopefully. Yeah. I, I do still worry about the free throws because I think he's shooting what forty four percent for. And I, I, I'm sorry, I, do I don't. Too. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm, I'm I cut backtracking off, I a little bit. Mark. Like, <laughs> like, like I um, think I think that this team is it's definitely better than it was last year. And they, by virtue of not, you know, struggling as much to to start the well, by you know not being five hundred forty games in, presumably, um, they're going to have a higher seed, which will help them to not play the Celtics in the first round most likely. Um, yeah. But yeah, so like, I, I didn't mean to be overly harsh, but I think, yeah, there, I do still have a lot of questions. I do too. But I guess my point is like, if they score 115 points per hundred possessions again in the playoffs, they're going to win that series. I think like the, with the way, the way their defense is playing now, I think that they are okay to win that series. Now, like we'll see if that works, but that, that's why I say like, are we sure that, what Kevin is doing right now is not sustainable, I guess. Like when you have Kevin Durant and Kyrie who are just these gravitational forces of shot making and offense, it opens up so, so, so much more for everyone else to make it work. Even if you're getting that kind of defensive attention. So like, Mm -hmm. I'm not even saying like, I, I don't mean to like be an apologist for Kevin Durant here in terms of like, what happened last year in the playoffs with Boston. I just mean, like, he didn't play well. I think he would say he didn't play well. But, like, in terms of it being sustainable, in terms of it, like, projecting out to maybe working long term, I don't know, man. Like, I I think that – I think there's a real chance that this works in the playoffs. And that leads me to my next question here. Like, look, MVP race, MVP ladder – a third of the way into the season is a fool's errand. We still have two thirds of the way to go. Kevin Durant needs to be a top five MVP candidate. Like right now. Oh yeah. Uh, I I don't know what the odds are. I don't know what the, I'll I'll look up sports book as we uh, look up a sports book as we're talking, but like this is a real MVP candidate just straight up right now. I, I don't think that you can come up with any other, any other thought like he, he is a very, very real MVP candidate that I would not be surprised to see win the award. And currently this is fucking crazy. Um, I'm looking at points bet right now. Kevin Durant is 25 to one to win MVP. That feels very low. I don't understand betting well, but that feels extremely low. Yeah. So, so here are the odds. Um, I'll, I'll get up bet MGM as well as the, uh, Sportsbook partner at The Athletic. Jason Tatum is the favorite. Yasin Tedekumpo, Luka Doncic, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, Devin Booker, Stephen Curry, Zion Williamson are all ahead of Kevin Durant right now for MVP. I think, do you want my unofficial MVP ballot right now? Because I actually, I did this yesterday, so I thought it through. Be Steph. G- give, me, give me one second here. Oh, yeah, I just yeah. want to read out MVP gotcha. from BetMGM. Um Bet MGM's MVP race, Jason Tatum, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Luka Doncic, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, Devin Booker, Zion Williamson, Stephen Curry, Donovan Mitchell, John Morant, all 30 to one or better for MVP. At Bet MGM, Kevin Durant is 35 to one to an MVP. That is insane. That is insane. That is a bad line. I, I am just straight up saying it. That is a bad line. This team is in fourth place in the East right now because he's carrying them on his back. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. No, I agree. It is kind of wild. I Like, I couldn't have him lower than third right now. I know he's the top five, but for me, I couldn't go lower than third. I would be, for me, probably Steph, KD, Tatum, Giannis, and then I guess Luca. I just – Luca's been awesome, but I just can't with the Mavs. But – um I, yeah. I would not and have Luca. Probably, the probably Zion. Right now. I would have Zion. It would be yeah. Zion or Luca five, five, six. But like, yeah. I mean, the point being, like, Katie's just been amazing this year. I, I think I would have, in some order, Tatum, Giannis, Kevin Durant. <sighs> um, 
Um, probably Booker, and then one of Steph, AD, Zion. I think I, think I would have would Luca have... more like in the top ten. Yeah, I, I agree. Now. I think yeah. for me, just like because Steph, like I mean, this is like that's what sucks about Steph being out now. Like this has been the best season of his career. Like if you're just looking at it statistically in the way that he's playing, it's been unreal. Like, and I think obviously like, I don't know. I always try and figure out how to factor in the actual win loss record to it. Cause it's, it makes it, it's always murky. That's what I hate about awards. Sometimes it makes it fun to talk about, but I don't know. Just like his, his year has been unreal. Like, I mean, he's 50, 43, 92, 30 points, seven boards, seven assists. Like, what, how? Like, and same thing, I mean, it's the same thing with, with KD. This league's awesome. I think it's the best way to put it. You and I love basketball. Basketball's pretty great. Yeah. We got some good basketball going on this year. Yeah. By, by the way, Stephen Curry, uh, <laughs> in his 2016 year, uh, true shooting percentage plus of, so like adjusted for league average, yeah. uh, 124. This year is at 116. Stephen Curry is still probably like, top two or three in the league in terms of that number, if not like even higher um, among high volume players. And he is nowhere even in the ballpark of his 2016 year in comparison to league average. And like in comparison to like what the climate around the league was at that point, Stephen Curry is unbelievable. Um, Just an incredible human being uh, as a basketball player. I can't really wrap my head around or fathom how someone could be that good at something as he is at shooting. Yeah. Um, But yeah, Kevin Durant's a real MVP candidate, and we need to start acting as such. Look, they're up one right now against Detroit. You know, there's 28 seconds left in this game. We'll see what happens. But if they win, this team will be 19 and 12, like where he has been the driving. Like, here's the thing. It's so easy to create a narrative for Kevin Durant as MVP this year, right? Coaching change the entire disaster that was Kyrie Irving for the first quarter of this season. Um, Roster that is questionable around him. Ben Simmons still figuring things out in terms of getting back to his peak level effectiveness. And here is this guy, Kevin Durant, that is just dominating and taking the league and somehow carrying the Nets to a top four spot right now in the East. How he's doing this is like almost unfathomable to me. He's so good. Yeah. I agree. So, yeah. 